Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. So I'm really motivated and pumped up about this workshop build uh, slash garage remodel. I have another vacation day on Monday. Did not know that. Completely spaced it. I guess I had requested the day off. I thought I had something pertinent and pressing to do. That kind of fell through. So since that fell through, I've got the day off. So I don't know if I'm going to start tearing everything down and putting it in a box, but I think just before I get too crazy, I'm going to take one of our fellow subscribers, his name is Chip B. I'm going to take some of his uh, comments into consideration before I get too crazy and start buying a whole bunch of sheet wood and uh, you know insulation and things like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Lowe's today. I'm going to take a look at some of the Bosch lineup. I, but I know I'm really set on rigid, really am, especially with this new uh, table saw that they have that's portable and you step on the pedal, it pops up, you easily roll it around. But I want to see what Bosch and Hilti have to offer. I also want to see what uh, Hitachi has to offer, if they have anything to offer. All I know is you get some different stuff made from different manufacturers down at Lowe's than you do at the Home Depot. Sometimes you get some of the same stuff, but I'm always curious to see what other stores have and what I don't currently have, and what I can formulate an opinion about. And since I'm doing a remodel, what better way to try out some new products than by having a project to do at home. So I'm getting ready to tear out of here. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get a chance to bump into my dad and we'll go get see what his thoughts and opinions are on some of the stuff at Lowe's, if he can break away from what it is that he's currently doing. All right, so I'm currently looking at some contractor table saws for cabinetry and OSB cording for the remodel. And here I am looking at this Delta, but it's coming in at 600 bucks. It does appear to be heavy duty. I can't really tell for sure how smooth this fence is gonna be. So far, not a bad price in comparison to the rigid, I think goes for over 700 right now. So this one has my attention for sure. Here's the uh, dead man switch here on the end. And looks like you can cut at angles if you want to. And overall, it just looks and appears to be a really, really smooth looking uh, table. Now I'm looking over here at the Bosch. I was curious about this Bosch, but it's also going for 600 bucks. And it's a job site one, so if you wanted to take this to a job site, that would be good for you. But I'm not looking to take it to a job site. I just want it for the house. This one has a lot of similarities to the rigid one that I was looking at. The Dewalt one, I was looking at this and already discouraged based on the display. It's just broken all to heck. So somebody might have done that, but that just calls out cheap to me for the price they want for it. I also was looking at the Cobalt, which I was halfway interested in because of the pricing at $279 for a job site. But again, also broken which just tells me that that's cheaply made or poor design. Looking over at the chop saws, they got one here from Cobalt for $159. I'm liking this uh, Hitachi though, $99 for this miter saw. And it does come in at an angle. Sorry if I'm calling it the wrong name, but I still refer to them as chop saws. But I was also looking at this more of a telescoping uh, miter saw double bevel sliding miter saw so you can come out a little bit wider. Now how wide do I actually need to go? I don't know, which is why for a hundred bucks, I think this Hitachi is a smoking deal. And I'm thinking about picking this up because that would be freaking awesome. I don't have the uh, double slide feature. I don't know that I actually need it. It does have a laser as well, so you can get a nice straight cut. This one I'd probably have to mark with some kind of chalk pen. So this is on my agenda today. I'm thinking I'm gonna pick that up for sure. This one, I don't know, six is a little bit high for me for right now, but that's not a bad deal. I can either get this one today, or I can get this and then check out some drywall guns, which we're gonna go check out right now. I'm curious about Bosch and Hitachi. So we're gonna go take a look at that. And as a shop upgrade, I also wouldn't mind getting a better bench top grinder. I broke the crap out of my Ryobi. It still works, but the thing wobbles all over the place, which could be dangerous. My dad has Delta, he loves Delta. I'm thinking I might go Delta. And for a $50 difference between the two, I think I'd go with the bigger route. That's just my opinion though. All right, let's go to the drywall guns. 
I also broke my saw horses and I'm looking at this right here for 40 bucks. I don't know if that's for each one. It looks like it's $40 each, but I would like to replace. See, I got these cheap ones like this, these Blue Hawk plastic ones. And within a couple uses I broke them. So I don't recommend getting the, the plastic ones, even though they're fairly inexpensive. I mean, look, 40 bucks for the Craftsman, 40 bucks for Blue Hawk, 40 bucks for Cobalt, heavy duty made out of metal. I think we're gonna go with the Cobalt on this. All right, guys, so I'm looking at the entire Bosch lamp that they have down here at Lowe's and Hitachi, and I do not see the drywall cordless screw gun option anywhere on here. Um, they just don't have it. I don't know what the deal is. I was looking down here at the individual items. I'm not seeing it. So we might have to go to a different store. Uh, let's go around the corner here and take a look. I'm sure they have the DeWalt one. Now, I was watching a review. DeWalt kind of came in second place on this and uh actually bosch surprisingly came in first place so i'm really looking for this bosch it's the biggest reason why i came down here i'm also looking for a jigsaw and i don't want to pay a killing for one i don't need anything too over the top heavy duty let's take a look at the one here so this one goes for 89 dollars. is it adjustable from side to side i don't know Okay, six amp, 3100, 3100, six and a half, one stroke, not a full stroke. So does this pivot, I do not know. Let's see here. Will it pivot? That's my question. All right guys, so I was also looking at a finish nailer or a brad nailer. I thought I might go with Bosch dish on this one coming in at 139 but i think on sale for 89.99 hell of a freaking deal but i gotta stick with rigid on this one i even think rigid's five dollars cheaper we did not find the drywall guns anywhere i think we're gonna go back and grab that hitachi we might hold off on the table saw for today but i've already picked up this jigsaw that is orbitable and it is by Bosch. We got our saw horses. Let's go get that Hitachi chop saw. All right, so something else that I'm learning here is we got specialty screws for hardwood and soft plywoods. I did not know that. But what I was really looking for was this jig pocket hole kit so I can go in an angle for the cabinets that I need to make at the house. So that's freaking awesome. And it does come with a bit and a drill and some wood dowels. I might have to grab that, man. So just saw this. If you're not sure how often or how many screws that you're gonna need, they have a whole kit here. That's a smoking deal, I think. And then I saw this, 25 bucks for this drawer slide jig. So if you needed to level something or mark it off, that would be awesome to have too. I'm telling you guys, I could go broke in this store. There's a three inch face clamp. I might have to get a couple of them. There, this one is a two inch. And of course we have this one here, is a six inch. And that's on sale, that's a smoking deal. All right, so until I can afford the table saw, 39.98 straight accurate cut. That's gonna work out really well for me until I can afford to drop the 600 bones for the table saw. Okay, one more item that I saw here, $39.98, last one for cornering. So let's hope I don't break the bank today, but that's gonna be one massive haul, I tell you what, and most of it's gonna be this Craig stuff. All right, uh, I've got a change of heart here. I think I'm gonna go with these ones made by Irwin for the cabinet instead of the other ones by Craig. Uh, a little bit more inexpensive and it's got a comfort grip too which is pretty nice i just don't know if i want to get one or two have you guys ever heard of this works 300 pound working sawhorse two and one i'm looking at this i'm looking at the cobalts and i'm like man i think i might just get one of these instead that would be like 80 bucks for this plus tax or get this and this would be perfect Oh man, I know I'm a rigid fan, 
but Vince talks about Metabo all the time. 70 bucks, Brad Naylor, Metabo, HPT. That might be worthwhile in picking up. Dang, look at that. And then here's the crown stapler. I'm sorry, pin nailer. And then there's the crown stapler. <clears throat> so, smoking deals going on down here right now. Let's take a look at these framing hammers real quick. Collated framing hammer, 179. Brushless plastic strip framing nailer, 159. Coil sliding roofing nailer, 349. That's a little bit on the pricey side, but... I mean, when you need it, you need it, right? So let's take a look again at this Metabo Brad Nailer. Where are you? Let's take a look here, Mr. Brad Nailer. Metabo Brad Nailer. Oh, I swear my wife's gonna freaking have a heyday with me. That is nice. I don't know that I can not scoop that up. We are going absolutely crazy today. But I am thinking about picking up this Gorilla Wood Glue. Though I see this Tight Bond 3 Ultimate Wood Glue. Waterproof exterior, interior. Eight bucks, seven fifty. You get so much more of it. Yeah, I think we're gonna go this route. Okay, I'm really digging this style of handle here. And it would match the cabinet really well. So I think we're gonna get one of those. Okay, I am not gonna lie. I might have gone a little bit overboard and half the stuff I said I was gonna grab, I ended up having to put back, but I did walk away with what I feel is probably one of the larger tool hauls that I've done all year. Some of the stuff that I got was just incredibly, incredibly good savings. I couldn't pass up on half of it really, but I had to, had to. Working within a budget, man. But I was able to get the Metabo I think I might have accidentally misspoke and said it was the Hitachi, but it's actually the Metabo uh, wood chop saw. I did get the uh, workbench. I did get the Metabo brad nailer with some brad nails. I got some wood glue. We got an Irwin clamp. And I got some uh, wood here so that way I can try to make my daughter a table because she wants that refrigerator in her room. I told her we would make that happen. So. Here's going to be a nice fun project for my day off. And I know the kids are at school, but maybe, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get started. I might be able to get everything unboxed at least until she gets out of school. And then maybe her and I can do it together. So I'll just see you guys back at the house. Oh. All right, guys. So out here in my dad's garage, he's got a few things that I wanted to share with you after I just got done making a special trip to Lowe's today. Huge, huge Metabo pickup that I'll share with you guys when I get back to the house. But let's take a look at his table saw. So this one is from Dewalt. He's going to do a complete breakdown and video of his thoughts and opinions on it. How much it costs for that, the bottom, etc. So I urge you guys to go down the description, check out his channel. Right. All right, so before we end up taking a look at some of the other stuff, I did tell you guys that he had some Delta stuff that he's had for a long time. Like this chop saw or... That's what you call it, right? Chop saw, table saw? Anyways, it's got an orbital function or angle cuts. I think the Metabo does too. We'll take a look at that later at the house. Here is his Delta grinder. Big old heavy duty bastard. He's had that for a long time. I'm sure he'll share his thoughts and opinions with you if he hasn't already. You guys got to really check out his channel. I did mention we were talking about toolboxes. Everyone's all like, oh, icon, oh, fuck. He's got this nice ass home ec box that he also did a video on. You need to check it out again. I'll put the little card up here to that video for you guys to go check out. He right. got this on a Craigslist for a smoking deal. 250 bucks and they threw in a Makita angle grinder. 250, 250 with the Makita angle grinder. Can't buy a nice ass box for cheap. Get the fuck out of here. All right, we're gonna also check out his bandsaw. How long have you had this for? I've had this for about, what, Chris, how long? long time. Uh, uh, six, seven years? I'd say at least probably six or seven since I've been down here anyways and before then. Shit out the way. <clears throat> and he's got a powerlifting competition coming up. Where are you going to be at for that? Rancho Cucamonga, December 7th, uh, California Winter Classic. <laughs> this is my big little brother, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Fucking yeah. beast mode, bro. <laughs> All right, let's check yeah. out some other cool tools. 
All right, so how much did you pay for the Ingersoll ran? $125. I had to take the heads off of it. I had to put new gaskets on it, cleaned them up, and then it says, well, you got to, you need a torque wrench to torque them down. And I worked with a friend of mine out of, uh, well, he's in Hawaii, and he told me how to torque these without a torque wrench, which is not the best way in the world, I understand, but at the time, I didn't have a torque wrench, and it's worked beautifully ever since. I've been using it for, what, five years? I don't know. Five? Uh, got the job six, done, though. Man. Got the job done. Yeah, so a lot of times you can get this stuff from somebody that said, don't want her. I mean, he said, nah, this thing, because I needed a new compressor. I mean, this thing's got a head gasket leak or something weird going on. And and I knew, worst case scenario, I just had to replace, because it's a two-stage unit. It's a motor and the pump separate. I just have to replace one of them. I bought it, contacted this friend of mine that's in Hawaii that used to rebuild these things. And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, just keep me on speakerphone. He goes, I got all the time in the world. Let's just walk through it, the tear down, and I'll tell you what to do and how to do it. Order these gaskets first, get the stuff in, call me. That's what we did. And Fuck and yeah. The result, man, it works beautifully. It's just like having somebody walk you through every step of the way, I mean, on exactly how to redo that top end. Sometimes it's nice to have friends like that. All right, so here's my dad's welding table. I think this looks awesome. I've got an upcoming idea that I have on how I want to make my welding table. We're going to go into more detail with that later down the road, but it's not going to be in today's video. But all right, guys, that's all I have for right now. I'll see you guys back at the house. Check out my dad, a.k.a. the Home Handyman. Check out my big little brother. <laughs> And uh, I'll have him shoot me his uh, channel here through text message so I can put that down there for you guys hey, too. I would appreciate all your guys' support and subscribing and following my videos because he eats a lot. Seriously, I need the money. He eats <laughs> a lot of food. This guy, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'll see you guys back at the house for beer and we'll look at the Metabo. Can't beat that for 10 bucks. Oh yeah. Take us to your party. Okay, so walked away virtually unscathed from Lowe's today. I had an idea of a couple of things I wanted to get. They didn't have the drywall screw gun and the cordless option. I was really hoping they would have the Bosch. I might have to order it online. That's still the one I want to get and test out and run. But it did a killer and phenomenal reviews out there right now on that one specifically. So... That's still on my to-do list. Table saw number two I want to go look at a little way outside my budget at the moment. So put that on the back burner. Found a cheaper alternative for now. So that way at least I got some of the tools that I'm going to need to get the ball rolling. Now I'm not going to roll on this project this week. I'm just going to do little bit by little bit as the weekends progress. But it was one hell of a Metabo day. Now I did make the mistake in saying... Hitachi, then I said Matabo. In fact, it's one and the same. It's Hitachi and Matabo. Let's take a look. All right, so virtually unscathed, virtually unscathed, we got the Matabo HPT Hitachi Power Tools. Durability first, five year professional warranty. It's got the angle, so you can make angle cuts, 10 inch compound miter saw. Take a look at some specs here real quick in the back. We'll do another separate review of this later. Amps 15, 5,000 RPM, arbor size 5 8, adjustable 0 to 45 degrees, angle range 0 to 52 degrees, right and left, height, total weight 22 pounds. Also picked up the Metabo HPT Brad Nailer and a box of Hitachi 18 gauge brad nails also picked up the Irwin angle clamp so that way i can fix the cabinet in our kitchen i'll show you that and then i grabbed some of this tight bond three ultimate wood glue and a handle just because i wasn't sure if the handle was still good i also bought a piece of nice wood sealed in plastic for our table project that me and my daughter got going on plus the legs and side braces all right, so down here in the lower corner, you can see where it busted out. Now, I might have to take this whole entire thing out. I might have to get some different cork board because it does look a bit destroyed. My hope is that maybe I can shorten it a little bit. And if I can't, then I'll just get all new wood and recreate the whole entire uh, drawer itself 
and I'll just take some tape measurements and some snaps and then come tomorrow or Friday I'll go down to Home Depot and I'll pick up some more uh, wood and then we'll come back and we'll just build the entire cabinet drawer itself. I also, I didn't mind the handle here and I suppose I could always match the handle, but I did like the way the other one felt. This cab, this cabinetry is old, old. This is all original cabinetry. You could see that some sanding should take place, some wood staining, something, right? So I do have some household renovation projects coming up, but one step at a time. So first things first, at least fix the drawer. That's number one. Number two, build a little table for my daughter's bedroom. Number three, we come back to the restoring project in the garage and we'll just keep tackling one little thing at a time to include my outside patio that I still have not finished yet. And uh, let's just take a quick peek at that. All right, so one of the things that I messed up on out here when I was creating this entire awning and porch system was that I preemptively jumped the gun. I bought like two or $300 worth of wood, frame and hammer, et cetera, and just started going to town. Here's the problem I have with projects that take me too long to develop enough income for to finish. So as you can see, we're starting to lift up a little bit. Now I did use nails. I probably should have used screws. So let's leave that as a tip. Uh, then all of a sudden the wife wanted a doorway to get to them from the recycle. So I've got a doorway on each end. I started to hang joists. Notice this one's starting to crown and tweak. I don't like the hangers that I put up. I don't like the angles that I have. The wood's already starting to split. So uh, clearly I used the wrong wood here. Probably should not have used pine. Should have done pressure treat for all the joists, uh, but I didn't. I used one stick of pine for the center. Pressure treated the rest, which seemed to come out okay. But then I got the top where it's kind of overlapped and kind of sticking up a little bit higher than one spot than the other. And I, I don't know, I'm, I haven't framed them in a year. So you could tell me, man, you really screwed up on those joists. I know, believe me, I know. This is just a little DIY at home project. Look, I even used the wrong joist hangers here. I didn't realize those were for two by six and I ended up throwing a two by four there. So little tiny quirks, little tiny things and mistakes that you're gonna make along the way with these do it yourself at home repair projects. But that's half the fun in learning. It doesn't bother me that I messed up. I know, but it's a learning experience. All this stuff takes time. You know, you do your research, you go onto YouTube, you see what other people have done, how they develop projects, how they made it work for them, the tools that they use in the progress, and little tiny mistakes that I'm sharing with you here, like preemptively jumping the gun and then trying to build something that I couldn't afford the whole build on. So let's go inside and wrap it up with my final thoughts on some of the stuff that we saw today and what the future is getting ready to entail. All right, guys, well, that'll wrap up today's video. I hope you had an enjoyable time I hope you guys had a kick-ass time with me down at Lowe's today, shopping around, looking around. I went for two completely different things, walked out with two completely different things, three different things. Oh, I had so much in the cart, you guys don't even know how much shit I put back. But look, I really wanted to get the Bosch jigsaw, I wanted to get the Bosch miter saw, I'm sorry, I wanted to get the Bosch jigsaw, I wanted to get the Bosch router, I wanted to get the Bosch uh, drywall screw gun. The more I thought about it, the more hot deals I came across and I was like, wow, no. I'm thinking about the tools for the restoration project, but I really needed certain tools here at the house for other things that are breaking and falling apart, like the miter saw, like the brad nailer. Now I could have used the crown stapler for sure, but I found that the brad nailer is actually a lot nicer to have, especially for this small little you know, uh, cabinetry and, and finish work. So for me, I enjoy a good brad nailer. I really do. Now I haven't tried the Metabo yet. Now when I was young framers helper, I had used a Hitachi framing nailer. We used Cinco framing nailers. We used the uh, Cinco brad nailers and crown staplers. We used the Hitachi roofing coil nailer when I was roofing. Those are really good brands in my opinion. They seem to hold up and a lot of the contractors thoroughly enjoyed those products. Now me being a Rigid fan, I've come across a whole bunch of Rigid stuff that I've loved and enjoyed having over the years. I've had a great first impression with the coil nailer when I was renting it from Home Depot first just to make sure I even liked it. Once I found out I liked it, I sunk my teeth in and bought one. Now since I knew I loved Rigid platforms so much, especially coming to their nailers, 
I picked up the big badass beast of a framing hammer that they had. I've been loving it. Haven't got a chance to use it a lot, but it's a DIY thing, man. It is meant for one-time use here and there every so often whenever I feel like using it. And that's the fun thing about being an adult, right? You get a chance to try out whatever you want to try. You want to start being a cabinet maker? Go for it. You want to be a welder? Go for it. Don't let anyone tell you that you suck and you can't do it because that's a bunch of bullshit. All it takes is a little bit of practice. You buy your own tools. You use your own money for whatever you want. Have fun with it, man. These projects can be a blast and it can be a huge stress reliever. Say you work in the daily grind in automotive like me. You get tired of working on cars. Why the hell would you want to work on cars when you get home? I know there's going to be some people down in the comments saying, because I love working on cars. I can work on cars day and night. I was there too, many, many years back. Not so much anymore. Nowadays, I'm like, what can I do that's not car related? And that's when woodworking and metalworking come into play. So I hope to do a lot more projects with you guys. Time will tell. Things happen. Things cost money. I'm not worried about it, but I know the more tools you have for the various things that you want to do, the more cool things you actually can do with it, and you don't have to pay for those rental fees every single time. That's all I got for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's content. Cheers, and deuces.